So I am working on the border now, and my intention here is to sort of make this uh, border look like a picture frame. So kind of I have this gold silk uh, fabric that I'm trying to make look sort of like an antique type frame. Uh, so <clears throat> this, I don't know if you can see it in the pictures or not, but um, <clears throat> that's the uh, that's the plan, and uh, so I'm just uh, I'm quilting away on that. There's a lot of uh, a lot of quilting goes into this. I drew my design onto the fabric. Um, I will wash this when it's done and I will take that uh, the marker uh, out so that um, the, the red lines and the blue lines that you're seeing in the pictures won't uh, won't show up anymore and that'll certainly change the look but for this, I felt like I needed to have some marking on here so I could see where I was going. I, uh, I still have some uh, uh, more quilting to do in the uh, center. Uh, the picture of Teddy is not completed. But I was... Uh, Feeling like I needed a break from that part, so I decided to do one of these sides. I'll have uh, you know the other the other three sides still go, but I was sort of anxious to see how the. See how the silk would quilt, and uh, to um, you know get a good uh, a sense of what what the whole overall thing was going to look like. Um, I uh, knew that I would do the marking on this with something that needed to be washed out. So, I actually pre-washed the silk fabric. And, uh, <clears throat> so I know it's not going to get messed up if I wash it again. I'm, uh, I'm quite sure that uh, it's probably not recommended to wash in the washing machine and dry in the dryer, but I did it anyway because I wanted to find out uh, what would happen to it, and uh, you know I I. I've never made a quilt where at the end uh, I looked at it and thought it didn't need washing. You know, I drag them around, they hang on the floor, they, uh, I, you know, they, they get dirty while I'm working on them. So uh, uh, I figured no matter what, I'm going to have to wash it. And uh, I see a little thread that I missed. Uh, so anyway, I pre-washed the silk to uh, make sure that it would... Uh, would hold up, and it did. So anyway, these, these markings will wash out. It won't be a problem. What I'll do is finish all the quilting on the whole quilt, and then I will... Uh, uh, run a <clears throat> run some stitching along the edges 
just to be sure it doesn't unravel too much. Wash the whole thing, take it out, lay it flat, block it sort of so I, I get a nice flat finish, let it dry, then I'll uh, come back and bind it. So the binding will be the last thing. Um, I find that if I do uh, all of that before I put the binding on, then I'm more able to get a nice flat finish. So, anyway, that's all yet to come. Right now I'm just doing the, uh, the quilting uh, design and then I'll come back for the binding. Um, so, using uh, actually, it's kind of weird. This uh, this fabric, and I don't know if you can see it here. The uh, the the weave is. Uh, gold threads one direction and green threads the other direction. So I've got, um, and, uh, and you can maybe see it a little bit here in the selvage uh, where you can see the green that's in there. So I'm actually, on the quilting, I am using a uh, kind of a, a gold green color. It's almost a chartreuse color thread. It seems to blend uh, pretty well. Uh, I could have used plain gold. Uh, I could have used a contrast. Uh, so, uh, but I, that's what I'm using because it seemed like with, with that gold and green together that it was a good choice. So, that's the thread. And I am using a poly uh, batting, and I've got it's it's not that thick, so I've got two layers of, of batting uh, that I've used, and uh, uh, because it's poly, I'm not worried about that shrinking. Uh, so again, when I wash it, uh, I'm not going to worry about that. All the uh, all the fabric in the top has been pre-washed, so shrinkage is not going to be a problem. And this one, I will not, uh, after I wash it, uh, I will not dry it in the dryer. I will just lay it out flat somewhere and let it air dry. So there should not be any problems of it becoming horribly distorted or uh, any real shrinkage problem. Anyway, that's that's what I'm doing. And what I'm finding myself doing here, for whatever reason, I keep getting, I keep leaning over further and further and further and further until my head is like right on top of the machine. And, uh, I have to keep reminding myself that I actually see better when I'm further away from it. Uh, but when I start trying to do uh, quilting where I'm following lines that I've drawn on, I tend to get closer and closer to it. And it really, I have to just keep reminding myself that it's not helping. It really isn't. It's just giving me a sore neck. Uh, I really can see better when I sit straight up, uh, but for some reason, I get closer and closer to it the longer I work on it. Uh, it's kind of like when I'm driving and it's really snowing hard, I tend to lean forward and lean forward and lean forward, thinking that extra two inches or three inches that I'm closer to the windshield is going to be able to make me see better. Uh, it's kind of the same idea. I get uh, 
I get too uh, too anxious to uh, uh, try to see it better, and it's actually making it worse. So, anyway, I I keep leaning forward, but I really don't need to. So what I'm working on now is uh, doing, uh, well you can see I'm doing these little, uh, uh, whatever you want to call those. Now I'm going to go back uh, down this way, then I'll go back up from the bottom and fill in the spaces there. Then I'll go back to the bottom and, and start again and do this line, and our, uh, the, the spaces in here. Uh, so it's kind of a, a lot of back and forth. And then when I'm done, I'll look at the whole thing and decide if I, uh, I need to go back in and do some fill in between any of this other stuff. The, the stitches that I do in, in the background, that, that filling in space, um, that uh, pushes the fabric down and makes the uh, other areas stand up more. So sometimes that's uh, uh, that's why I put that in there. It's not because it adds a lot visually to it um, with the thread itself. It's that the, uh, the the extra stitching pushes that fabric down and it makes the uh, the other areas stand up more. So anyway, I'm going to. Well, I think I'm going to skip that first section because uh, I can catch that when I come back the other direction. sometimes as it's coming undone there's a, a little uh, there's there's a couple of spots on some of these where there the, where the uh, where the plastic is kind of rough and sometimes the thread will catch on it and that makes it have to pull really hard uh, so I, ha I, I keep looking up to make sure my thread is still uh, Unwinding off of that spool real nice and smooth. I can usually tell when it's not just by looking at my stitches. But I'd certainly rather <coughs> catch it before it makes weird stitches so I don't have anything I need to take out.
I'm going to save that side for when I come back and do this this corner medallion y thing that I've got there. So now I'm doing the, uh, and it's, I'm sure it's not easy to see this, but I'm doing a uh, small stip line stitch in this portion.
So this is uh, I find that uh, as far as the uh, the quilting goes, when I can work on the very edge of the quilt, it's the easiest part of the quilting to do because I don't have so much shoved up inside the machine. When I'm when I'm trying to work in the middle of the quilt, I've got a whole bunch of quilt that has to be stuffed back and it's harder to move things around. That working on the edges is, I think, the easiest part of the whole uh, endeavor of quilting. So this part's kind of kind of fun. Anyway, I will keep stitching away and uh, at some point I'll come back and show you what the finished uh, border looks like. And uh, like I said, I've got, still got a lot of the center to finish, so I may switch to working on that again also. So I'll be back soon. <clears throat> well, I've got just about finished on this uh, one side of the uh, of the border, and I've got. The next side marked uh, for the same. So that's the basic uh, quilting, and uh, you can see on the back it's uh, what it looks like. Uh, so, anyway, lots to go. I'm going to start again with the uh, with the the brown section. And uh, after I get that done, I'm going to work my way out and kind of try to keep it smooth as I go because it tends to, you know, you want to try to keep the puckers out on the back. Uh, but after I get all that done, then I'll go back and, and work again on the center uh, and finish uh, uh, doing Teddy's face. Um, but I'm kind of having fun with this. It's, uh, it's kind of a neat... Uh, haven't haven't done that kind of a design before. I'll use uh, the same fabric, uh, which I saved enough of, uh, um, and I'll, I'll use that for the binding. And I'm going to try and do a real narrow, narrow binding, uh, but uh, so it'll look something like that. Anyway, that's where I'm at. Happy quilting.